Hello, family, and welcome. We're Bob and Penny Lord, and we feel very blessed to be able to bring you this program. As you know, we go all over the world to research, videotape, and bring you programs in order to tell the story of a saint. Today, we bring you the life of the Apostle of California, Blessed Junipero Serra, a powerful saint in our church. The Lord has given us a breathtakingly beautiful, visible legacy of the mission of evangelization he and his friars performed to bring the Word of God to the Native Americans of California. Our saint was born on November the 24th, 1713, in the sleepy little village of Petra on the island of Mallorca off the coast of Spain. He was baptized Miguel José Serra the very same day. His parents knew from his earliest years that this was a special child. He was confirmed two years later in 1715. He always felt the calling to the religious life. His biography states that he was so in love with St. Francis and his followers, he wanted to wear the Franciscan habit while still a child, but he had to wait. At 15, Miguel went to the capital of the island, Palma. He entered the Franciscan novitiate at the Convento de Nuestra Señora de Los Angeles. In 1730, just two months before his 17th birthday, he received the habit of the Friars Minor, the Order of St. Francis. The following year, he made his profession, shed his name Miguel, and took on the new name that would become famous the world over, Friar Junipero Serra. He studied for the priesthood at the Franciscan convent in Palma in Mallorca, where he adopted a motto from St. Paul, which would become his vanguard in his mission work. Always go forward, never turn back. He was ordained between 1737 and 1739. The exact date is not quite known. He continued studying and received his doctorate in theology. After that, he became a professor of theology at the Pontifical Imperial Royal and Literary University of Mallorca. He continued in this capacity until he was 35 years old in 1748. Of his many students, two natives from Palma who followed him on his mission to California were friars Francisco Palo and Juan Crespi. Junipero read the lives of the saints and wanted to follow in their footsteps. He wanted to be a missionary, a martyr, an evangelist for Christ. But because of his many studies and his desire to become a doctor of theology, his vocational pursuits had to be put on the back burner until the Lord was ready to place him in the role he had fashioned for him. On April 13, 1749, Junipero and Francisco Palu sailed for Mexico, the first leg in a lifetime journey. He would never see his parents again. that Blessed Junipero Serra uh, was a reluctant missionary. He left his beloved island of Mallorca um, and he said, he told us to, uh, his brother to tell his parents of the pain that he suffered leaving them, leaving his aged parents and leaving that beloved island. But you know, the Lord was that uh, uh, hound of heaven, persistent, persistent Lord who would just not leave him alone and he knew he had to come here to bring Christianity to the natives, to Native Americans, to Indians. He is called the Conquistador of the Cross. He is also called the Apostle of the Americas. It took him eight months to get from Mallorca to Mexico. He arrived on December the 7th, 1741, just one day short of eight months. He set foot on Mexican soil on the day before the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of Our Lady. However, it took him almost 20 years before he got to his first California mission in San Diego, in what is today the state of California. Those 20 years prior to arriving at San Diego were put to excellent use in setting up missions all over Mexico and formulating a way of teaching the natives to be self-sufficient and become strong Catholics. In 1769, Friar Junipero was transferred to the mission town of Loreto in Baja, or Lower California. 
There were 15 missions which had been founded in Baja, California. But the major thrust for having him go there was an anticipation of having missions initiated in Upper California. He went, and on July the 1st, 1769, he arrived in San Diego. On July the 2nd, he celebrated the first mass in what is now known as the famous California missions. This land was not bought easily. The Indians in San Diego did not accept uh, the word, the gospel. The missionaries, immediately. immediately. Uh, they were a little cautious. And you can understand why. They, they looked at the, at the cemeteries, and, and they saw many in the cemeteries. You know, when the Spaniards came over, they, they brought diseases that, that the Indians were, had no immunity for. And, and, and so it, these Indians just kept kind of an arm distance. Even those who were friendly would kind of come and, and look them over and investigate were cautious. They were being prudent because they did not want to die. They didn't want their families. They didn't want to be obliterated from the face of the and, earth. So these are the things that he had to, to fight. And one of, the, um, one of the things about the people that he brought here initially, <clears throat> when uh, Blessed Sarah came here initially, he brought people that, that had experience in the field in Mexico. Many of them had been evangelizing and, and teaching the Native Americans in Mexico for 10 and 15, 20 years before they ever came to Upper California. Um, our Lord had his agenda. He had a reason for bringing the, the, uh, the missionaries here, and he used the government to do it. Actually, he used the Russians to do it. The, um, the government felt the threat of the Russians coming down from the Bering Strait along the coast of the Pacific, and they were afraid that they were going to start to um, settle this area. And so they felt they had to get up there and get their, uh, their lands settled, possessions, before the uh, Russians or any other country started to colonize the western part of the United States. And so they decided they had to get up there, and the only way they could do it is to bring the missionaries up there with them. So for the Lord, this worked beautifully because he wanted to convert the pagan Indians in Upper California. So now just imagine the first mission that uh, Junipero Serra opens is in San Diego. Way at the bottom. And now uh, the second one is on the very, almost to the very top. We're just about, uh, ooh, less 100 than 100 miles. miles from San Francisco. So you're talking about 650 miles, I believe, from San Diego to, Sa to uh, Carmel. Now, there was a logistics problem. How were we going to get supplies from the first mission, uh, which was 650 miles away, to here? It was only one way. And the way that Junipero Serra devised was to set up missions a day's journey in between. Because as we know, one mission helped to supply the, the next mission. One mission actually gave all the provisions to set up the next mission. And then that mission, when it was on its feet, would, would give the provisions necessary to set up another mission. And so it, it, was, it was on and on, one branch of the church building another branch of the church building another branch of the church. Missions, Mission San Juan Capistrano in Orange County, California. And with us is Mary Souza, a member of the Docent Society of San Juan Capistrano. It's so exciting, family, for us to, to bring you a pilgrimage shrine here in the United States. You, as you know, we've been all over the world bringing the faith back to you. And, but here is a place that is touchable, reachable, by almost everyone. It's a place that we have to come and visit because this is part of who America is. This is part of who the Roman Catholic faith is in the United States. Mary, 
We're so excited to be here. The, the exciting thing we just found out is that Mary not only belongs to the docent society, which is dedicated to, uh, I'm going to let her tell you herself, but... Uh, Educating but I, the people about the missions of California. But she's also a historian. <laughs> and she's, isn't that great? Yes, it is. And I welcome you to Mission San Juan Capistrano. This is Father's, one of Father Sarah's favorite missions. It was number seven of the nine that he founded. There's 21 missions in California. Uh, Father Sarah was uh, dedicated to save souls. He loved the Native Americans here that were at Mission San Juan Capistrano. Uh, he, he, um, you can feel the love here, and this yes. is what I, uh, yes. what I feel every time I come into the mission. Uh, he uh, said Mass, the Sarah Chapel here is the last uh, remaining chapel that he said Mass here, and it's just a very, very special place. So he actually did celebrate Mass at that chapel, yeah, right. the original chapel. And that's why it's called Sarah's Chapel. Ma oh. Now, what year was Mission San Juan Campestrano founded? Father Sarah founded this mission. In, in the first, it was founded twice, actually, in 1775, okay. mm. and it lasted eight days. <laughs> and they had to bury the bells and go down to San Diego to help out there. And then a year later, in 1776, it was refounded. Praise officially. God. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, lesson in that, a wonderful mm -hmm. teaching in that. Uh, right now, as many of us feel that our religious rights are just kind of filtering away like uh, the erosion of many of the beautiful hills here, here in 1776, this mission was opened again. This country founded under God, when the missionaries came here, their action was to educate the Indians, well, we call them the Native Americans, Americans. which actually they are, to educate them in the one true God.